Hi, welcome to another Derek Does. Today, we're doing this. Welcome back to another Derek Does. Today, we're gonna do this machine behind me. This is probably the most common industrial sewing machine, vintage industrial sewing machine out there. The Singer 31-15. If you remember, I did a series uh, on my 30-20 uh, which is basically the same machine, only the 20 has a bigger bobbin and I think it has just a smidgen higher lift on it. This is called the Taylor machine uh, because basically this machine was in every Taylor seamstress shop uh, across America and probably the world, really. Uh, these machines, they made millions of them. Uh, this particular machine is from 1938 and it is on its original table and its original legs, which I'll show you coming up. It's a really cool machine. It's a machine that I couldn't really pass up uh, just because I have, a, I have a soft spot for the uh, 31 series. So this is the 3115. I've had quite a few of these over the years, and then eventually I upgraded to my 3120 uh, that I originally had a 3115. Uh, so I'm gonna show you the machine. I'm gonna, uh, I picked this machine up. It was a local machine. Um, and it had been sitting for decades in a garage. And uh, I cleaned it up, uh, oiled it up, got it looking pretty good. I haven't done the legs yet, uh, but uh, just to show you, uh, the machine uh, had been sitting forever, uh, after, but after a good oiling and cleaning, I did get it to work. It has the original SLF 2 lamp with it. The only thing it was missing was the thread stand. And I do have thread stands that I can Put on this just that I have over the years um, so I'm just gonna have the thread you're gonna see it the thread bought the spools gonna be off to the side just to give it a little bit of height uh, so it's not actually on the table but you'll you'll see as it sews and that sort of thing so we're gonna take a look at the machine I'm gonna show you the table I'm gonna show you the motor that's on it uh, everything I as far as I know is original 1938 to the machine uh, I apologize that it's in the garage uh, as love uh, where I I brought it to the house, put it in the garage to get it all cleaned up. I didn't get it downstairs to my sewing room yet. So you see a lawnmower behind me and <laughs> a couple other things. So, uh, but let's take a look at the machine. I'm gonna show you in detail uh, what comes with a 3115, how it sews, uh, things along that nature, something that, uh, this is a machine that you could probably find if you look for it. And they're not that much money. I've seen them from free, um, this one wasn't free. Uh, I've seen them from free to 50 to 100. And then I see people like trying to sell them for $1,000 because they don't know what the machine is and it's not worth $1,000. Uh, this machine as is uh, with a light and the original table and everything, I would think in the three to 400 range probably. If you're looking for uh, a machine like this, if you can get a machine like this for 100, 200 bucks, that's a great deal uh, because of what you get. Uh, I wouldn't pay much more than that uh, myself. I would myself, I bought this machine just because it's all, I'm, I love all the old stuff that comes with it. That's how I love my machines with original wood tables and everything. So that's why I got this machine. The head itself uh, are from like 50 to 150 bucks for a 3115 uh, head. Uh, but with all the table and everything uh, together, it all obviously adds up. Uh, and uh, you can use this table with other machines too, which is another reason I got it, because then I could swap different heads into the same machine uh, table setup. So, but let's take a look at the machine and the table, and I'll show you what I've done and what probably kind of still could be done if need be. Uh, but I'm going to show you the 3115. So I moved over here just because the sun's going down. I want to get a somewhat of good light on it. This is the 3115. Uh, it's the classic Singer body. Uh, you've seen this. If you're into sewing machines, you know exactly what this is just by looking at it. It's more of a long bed, not a short bed. Uh, the Singer 95s was basically the same machine, only it was a short bed. Uh, and this is kind of the, what they call the long bed. And of course they had like a really long bed for canvas work, uh, like tarps and things like that. This is a machine that can do everything. It can do sew a suit, it can sew blankets, it can sew, it can sew everything. They call it the Taylor machine because again, it was on with every Taylor. Uh, here you can see 3115 and that will give you the uh, 
serial number with uh, the date of 1938. Uh, if you ever find a machine that has this sort of thing on it, if you ever like, what is all this? Sometimes the Singer logo is completely gone. What happened was whoever had this machine had a piece of fabric over this. And sometimes you'll even find machines that still have it. And they put their pins, when they're done, they put their pins, they go up and down. And if you look there, all that is from people shoving pins into uh, the fabric that was wrapped around there. I hate that when it happens because it ruins the uh, logo and kind of ruins the finish. But this machine was obviously used and you can tell exactly it was used because of that. Here's the foot. Uh, what I did is I did replace the needle with a brand new needle. It has the original SLF2 lamp with it. Uh, the cording is a bit suspect, but it does work. It's been repaired a few times. It has its original, this is what uh, the winder from a 1938 machine would be like. And if you notice, it's a little different than the 1950s ones and is also different from the earlier 1920s. Uh, they would actually, the early ones would just be two sections. It'd be a section here and then a section down here. And this one was the one piece. And this has this fancy uh, cast iron fanciness. Uh, later on, they kind of got rid of that, but they have it on this one. Original wood table. Nothing super fancy with the table. I'm assuming this is like a maple. The, the uh, drawer was missing when I got it, but they still have the uh, slides for the drawer. This is the 1938 switch for the Singer. See, it's a half horsepower 250 volts one phase and the motor and we'll get to that when I flip it around actually I have an old motor here from a modern machine that I took off and I replaced but uh, you can see this is the 30s type of it's like a pressed steel that's put together as opposed to a cast iron this is still cast iron and if you notice it still has the cutout here that you could have had a wheel in there for a treadle. It still has like the elements of treadleness, but it does not have a treadle. And then you have your oil pan there, and then the Singer motor. This isn't, this is like their second generation motor because the original motors they put in the 1920s were real ornate and they had Singer written around the outside. Um, I've had a few of those over the years, they're kind of cool. Uh, but again, I'm a little leery of using them. As you can see, the singer had a gold uh, filigree or something along the nature that they put on there, and then the foot. So you still have the element of the treadle foot, but it's not an actual treadle, it's an electric. This is your uh, pressure presser foot for your uh, lifter. If you ever wondered what that was, if you're not new to industrial sewing machines and then um, the you can see where the uh, thread stand would have been here so right now I have it actually on my drill press uh, just to test it out uh, and then this if you ever wondered what this is too if you ever see these on sewing machines they usually will come out it's a little wood dowel and it's not for thread it's not for your spool of thread it's actually because if you raise your sewing machine it has a place for it to rest. See that? That's what it's for. So uh, if, you're, if you're missing one of those and you see a hole right there, it's for a little wood dowel so you can get in and you can oil, you can clean your machine. That is what it's for. This is what a uh, original metal piece under, this is just to keep the drips of oil so they don't get on your pants or your dress. And then it has a little section here. That's how the foot lever work through your, your knee lever, I guess. And then it actually pushes against this. I believe that's that. And then uh, it raises the, the foot there. This is your uh, bobbin. And it comes out, you just pull that like a normal sewing machine. It's just a bigger scale, really, uh, a little fatter. So that's how that works. We'll close that up. Fits pretty nicely. And I'll show you the other side. I'll show you the motor. So it has the original Singer motor. 
So it's a 1700 uh, revolutions per minute, which is kind of what you want. The newer machines will be a 3400, which I believe is what this motor is. Um, this is a modern one. Uh, and these machines I don't think can really handle 3400 RPMs. This is great uh, and pretty much it works for everybody. I haven't cleaned this up yet, so that's why it's a little dusty. But it's a very, very cool machine. Someone had made this cool, uh, as you can see, this little on these wheels, and you can tell it's old because they used uh, regular screws. And as you can see, they actually cut out, this is actually, uh, there's little holes cut out that the foot actually fits in so it doesn't slide off. So they made a kind of a cool little item there. I might actually have to copy that over the years for a machine so you can just kind of wheel them around. But now that you've seen the machine, let's see it in action. All right, before we lose our light again, let's try this again. Open that up, turn the light on. Get the first one going. Well, my belt just broke. Uh, I did get it sewing, uh, but uh, because the belt just broke, because as I mentioned, it's an old belt, I did not replace the belt yet. Uh, there you can see, that's what happens with old machines, it's the original belt and it broke. Uh, but the machine does work. Uh, we just have to get a new belt for it. But for today, I'll just kind of show you um, I can manually do it for you, and you can see it sewing. <laughs> so it does sew. Uh, I'll just take that down to the end here. The belt just broke, so we will have to replace that belt. Uh, so, but let me show you how the machine is threaded up. So you can tell, uh, obviously things happen. Uh, especially with old machines, but basically uh, you have your choice depending how much tension you want. There's actually two holes here on this one and on this one. Right now I just have it running just through both, but you could run it through here to here to here, which give you more tension. And then you have three here. I just ran it through two of them because I'm not going anything super crazy. It goes around your uh, disc and you can see this is how this one's set up. Uh, it comes over this little spring and then uh, down this little device here and then goes up through uh, your thread there ten era uh, and then down through a little eyelet through another little section through another little section of the needle and then from here uh, it goes from this side out so it goes that way and then it picks up uh, down below. That is how you thread a 3115, also how you thread a 3120. Pretty much all the 31s and the 95s thread very, very similar to this. But as with all old things, things happen and uh, belts break. Just like this one. And you can see that <laughs> just snapped right where that hole was where the uh, little staple was but this at least gives you an idea of what a 3115 it's a very beautiful machine and with a new belt uh, they sew brilliantly i really like them they can sew pretty much everything i love this one because it's with the original legs original motor obviously original belt probably uh, but we will replace that and we will get it working fine. Uh, and it's a cool machine and I really like uh, the original table. I wish I had the uh, drawer with it, but uh, I do have some extra drawers that will probably fit right in there and be good as new, about the same era of this one. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick episode on the Singer 3115, the Taylor machine as it's known. Uh, Singer, a lot of machines had different names. There's like the 107W102, which is the Irish. This is the Taylor. Then there's a lot of uh, a 
the uh, home machines. Uh, what was it? The uh, 201 uh, is the, uh, was it the farmer's wife or the, se the seamstress? I, I, I don't know all the names. Uh, again, they're not real names. That's just what people call them. Uh, but this is the 3115. Uh, it's a, kind of a long bed. Uh, it can sew everything for the most part. Uh, do not be afraid to buy one of these because you will be happy if you do buy one of these because it just can do pretty much everything you want it to do. Uh, everything's available for this machine. You can buy pretty much any part that breaks on it because they made millions of them and you can get any part. And of course they copied uh, after the war the Japanese copied a lot of these and then uh, other places copied them too. So they're very easy to find uh, parts that are pretty much interchangeable on the machine. That's a 3115 from Singer. This is a 1938. Uh, if you enjoy this sort of content, please subscribe, comment, uh, let me know stuff. Uh, obviously, this one had a couple issues as I was showing it to you that happened, but that's just part of owning a vintage industrial sewing machine. So I will see you on the next Derek Does. Thanks.